we hear a lot of buzz in this internet time, like the biggest trade in Wall Street history, uncommon breakthroughs in health tech, or the rise and fall of crypto. Sometimes it's climate forecasting. But all of it comes down to one thing, which is someone spotted a pattern before anyone else did. Sometimes that someone is an analyst in a firm. Sometimes it's the people sitting in uh, college rooms. Sometimes it's a 14-year-old coding in a garage. Sometimes it's just a simple Google search. Let me share you some facts that will blow your minds. Shocks that may rewire the way you see data. Bitcoin's entire blockchain is just 550 GBs, but it represents a trillion dollar economy. Think about it. The full ledger of the transaction data ever happened in the history is just 550 GBs. It fits in less than a quarterly to the decent mobile phone you all are carrying. Yet, it underpins a trillion dollar economy along with 10,000 plus products. That shows value doesn't come from size. It comes from your trust in patterns. Now, one of the example I wanted to share this time, it is related to your body. Your DNA, your own DNA is 3.2 billion letters long. But only 1% of it codes your protein, which make your body. The rest, what about the rest? One thought it is junk in the history, but not anymore. Now we are researching on how it is packing the regulatory signals, the evolutionary patterns and switches throughout the generations. You are built on 3 billion letters and we still don't understand 99% of it, of the message it encodes. The most complex data structure ever discovered is us, the human body. And patterns we haven't seen might matter the most. The third example that I wanted to share is the job interview signals. When people search for things like job interview clothes, how to ace an interview, or the best resume template for a job, it's a signal. In multiple countries, the spike in these search terms indicates and precedes the official unemployment data, which is upcoming two, three months. Google's own economic research found job research related queries are the best indicator for the unemployment data. And sometimes it's better than the National Labor Department. From hedge funds to health tech, from crypto to climate finance, those who decodes the pattern first, make it big. They write books like The Billion Dollar Pattern. They call themselves at pattern hunters, but they are not wrong. We would try to emphasize that complex data isn't about PhDs or supercomputers. It's about our curiosity. It's about spotting the invisible threads that others miss. I specialize in drawing predictions from patterns in data sets. Financial signals, macroeconomic data, algorithm. You say it, and we can apply this pattern finding in every uh, domain. This interest and skill brought me the number one spot at the International Quant Championship in 2023 held in Bahamas. It was among 130 plus countries. With my experience, I can say first principles are always underrated. People apply complex theories without understanding the basics, and it's not just the beginners. Even experienced portfolio managers, data scientists do it. Understand the soul of the theory. Then you are able to extract the uncorrelated benefit of this knowledge pack. These edges, let's talk about finance industry. These edges in the stock market have to be mined. Be clear, I said mine. I repeat, the best word to say this is mining rather than just finding out edges. It's a 360 degree universe of possibilities. You have to dig for edges. Find that alpha that works. And more importantly, find that alpha that works for a longer time horizon. Same applies to healthcare. If you're formulating or designing solution for an unknown usage, it may be an organ support designing or prosthetic. You have to find a procedure, an algorithm that fits all the 3D points and anatomical measurements. It's not a tabular data anymore. It's a dense point cloud, maybe meshes, and you need to find patterns in them. Back in finance, we are talking about volatility surfaces, arbitrage opportunity surfaces, and data gets processed. 
the de to derive these signals. If you're still learning the way, the traditional way of learning data, the reading data and the visualizing it, and think that there could be some edge, uh, sorry, my friends, it is a very past thing. Now, before I share how to find patterns, you have to learn that you have to make custom pipelines, have to build your uh, custom ideology to get the edge. A simplified version of how a diverse patterns can make a gold mine. On the left hand side, you see several white noise signals, random, volatile, and unpredictable. We average them assuming they are uncorrelated. When the chaos starts to cancel out, you see the results. It's a cleaner, more stable signal. Now applying the same to portfolio management world. Now shifting it to the portfolio management world, each colored line is an alpha signal. Uh, each colored line on the left hand side is a colored alpha signal. Noisy, risky, and hard to rely on alone. Can't put a portfolio only on one's, one of the colored alpha signal. Uh, just like we discussed in the signal processing, when we combine multiple uncorrelated strategies and patterns, the portfolio becomes smoother. It becomes stable, it becomes resilient. This is the power of diversification through low correlation patterns called signals. What I showed you is an oversimplified version of the power of patterns. Now, I'll be sharing my way of finding patterns irrespective of the domain you are in. I call this the pattern prism. First, I'll start with range analysis. Start with boundaries. What's the span of your data? Not just numbers, but in type, quality, time frames, and entropy of the data. In markets, this could be price ranges, it could be volatility clusters, it can be sentiment uh, analysis. In health tech, it could be anatomical measurements. It also includes the scan fidelity and the procedural timeframes. Real patterns don't live in isolation. You have to see the entire spectrum. The main edge comes from there. I'll start with the dimensional decomposition and chunking. Break your data in fundamental components so that you can simplify the complexity without losing the information value. Focus on the core dimension that derives most of the variations. The variations I'm talking about is the womb for patterns and then later on getting on to good quality prediction. Let's understand what doesn't matter. Imagine it as an art of sculpting. You chip away the redundant mass and expose the underlying form. I'll start with the glitches. Glitches is sometimes feels like it's beyond our detection. It's not like that, my friends. Rather than simply flagging anomalies, understand What's the story behind this anomaly? What are these deviations narrating us? When anomalies occur, they aren't random. They are the first expression of change. They could be noise, but they can indicate an emergent opportunity. See anomalies across time scales. That would be my suggestion. See it on the second basis, hourly basis, daily and quarterly. You will find that edge. In healthcare, that edge could be an alg algorithm that fits a particular hard case that a human patient might be suffering from. J don't discard data just because it's limited to few instruments. Less data isn't always bad. Sometimes it is rich in predictive value. If you have uh, 3,000 stocks, you only have data for 15 stocks, you don't have to discard it because you, are, you have only 15 data points. You have to value it because for those 15 stocks, that, va that data value would be precious than ever. Now we uh, will look into the robustness of that pattern. Now we need to examine how these patterns will work on the time frame that we don't know. Does this affect across different regions? Is my pattern applicable on other regions? Is my pattern applicable on other asset classes or time frames? Just like signal processing, a pattern that only works in one setup isn't reliable. We need to see if similar co low correlated signals across geographies and market regimes still work. If you still average out the noise and reveal a cons consistent alpha, that's the win. In other words, can we spare a signal from randomness, no matter where it comes from? You truly test the robustness of this pattern. We need to move beyond just in sample results. That's where out sample testing comes in. We take the same strategy, the same signal, and test it on data it hasn't seen before. Different markets, different time regimes, even different uh, economies and geographies. If the no noise still cancels out, as we understood in the last slide, 
we are not just looking at a coincidence. We are looking at a repeatable and a scalable edge that we were striving for. Then we start with the regime test. Slice the market into different regimes. I'm talking about all the global financial markets. Convert them into bull, bear, high volatility versus low volatility, or different regimes that your strategy uh, promises. See if your strategy adapt to and breaks under the stress. Uh, they are performing or outperforming your eye sample testing or at least at par your IS in sample testing. Parameter sensitivity test. Test how performance changes when you tweak. The key parameters, example, in your strategy, there may be look, look back window or maybe thresholds that will draw the PNL of your uh, strategies. A robust strategy should work across a reasonable range of thresholds. If you're tweaking few values and your performance degrades a lot than expected, then there is something that you have to uh, take care. Not just one lucky combo should work. It should be a robust signal. What is it? As soon as a pattern is known, it starts to uh, disappear because you have arrived to a signal, but maybe some, someone in another world may have arrived to that signal as well. And key, the people keep on striving on the same signals and that signal decays. So you have to think that it may start decaying at a time before then your expectation. When I measure a particular target and detect a particular signal that it is decaying, you have to create a transition that have a good measure so that your portfolio performance shouldn't degrade. Basically, till when the pattern is surviving and analyze the decay rate of that signal. With all this, eventually you structure, structure all of this into your promising signal. Regardless of what you do, regardless of what you, what you perform, maybe in finance, research, entrepreneurship or operations, data is everywhere. If you can see the pattern, predict the outcomes, you win. If you are a CFO, you will optimize on the ROI of your time, ROI of your efforts or investment you have made. If you don't leverage data, someone else will do it at your cost. Remember this thing that data has a lot of pattern inside it. You don't have to beat around the bush. Alpha is in the data. Thank you.